Hi guys, I'm Anita and I'm back with another video. Today I wanted to share with you another project TBR thing for my 2020 reading. Um, this one is more in the focus of those books that I've had on my TBR on Goodreads for a really, really long time. So it's been more than two years, uh, two years or over since I added them to my to be read list. I mean, I think there are is one or two books added from January 2018, maybe, um, but otherwise they're from 2017 or prior. So what I've done is I've made a jar and filled it up with a couple of, I bought a jar and filled it up with a couple of um, uh, different pieces of paper. The orange ones are the normal TBR veterans, like their standalones or first in series. Um, that I don't know very much about and the green ones are about Sirius which I'll be talking about in a separate video because I don't think I have time to mention all of it in this one because I'm going to share the books that I have um, put in here uh, for next year to draw from and there are definitely more than 12 in there <laughs> uh, I think I have 50 books on this TBR so it could run for longer or I could pick more than one a month if I feel like I have room for that. Um, so yeah, all of these books are books that I'm still excited about but they've been on my TBR for so long um, that I need to give them some attention because it's so easy to be swayed with new books when they are added to your feet or whatever. Um, you're excited about the new books that comes out and f sort of forget the books that you're actually excited about a couple of years ago. What all of these books have in common, I think, is, except for one, is that they are all available for me either from Audible, I already have it on Audible, Audible, I have it from the library, uh, from Storytel, or I own it, and it's unwrapped. That's also really important because I don't know when I can get to the wrapped books. So, that is the deal with those. I have one exception, actually, the first one I'm going to talk about is one I actually own a physical copy of. There's a big chance I'll just listen to an audio of it anyway, so I'm going to be listening to it and then when I unwrap it, well, <laughs> we'll see. But it also could be that I won't get to it anyway, so we'll see. And the first book I have on this list is The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien, or actually The Fellowship of the Ring. It will be the one that I uh, will want to read because it's the first in the series and I will commit to that at least and I have wanted to read this for so long it's been on my TBR for it's the one that's been on my TBR the longest I think one of them but for some reason I just kept kept postponing it so for different reasons uh, I read The Hobbit this year and absolutely enjoyed it so I'm definitely more excited about reading it now um, because I know uh, J.R. Tolkien's um, writing style and I'm looking forward to seeing that. The second book I have is um, The Distance Between Us by Cassie West. I've had this on my list so long. Uh, I read two books by Cassie West. It's the same duology and I really, really enjoyed it. So I really just want to try more from hers and I've had this since 2013. So I really want to, to read this and see how she's doing in a more contemporary setting. And I've actually had it on a couple of TBRs before, but I never got around to read them. So hopefully if I pick... The I will get to it over the next year. The third book I have is Frigid by Jennifer L. Armentor, uh, where she's writing on the name Jay Lynn, I think. I have this on my Kindle. Um, so um, I know this is a new adult type of uh, contemporary romance. Um, and I have really enjoyed the Wait For You series. And so I would be want to read this one. It is a duology. If I like it, uh, there's the sequel Scorched. I think that's the what it's called. Um, so we'll see. Uh, but I'm definitely very excited about it. The fourth one is also, and it's a really popular book on booktube as well, uh, but that is uh, The Diviners by Libba Bray. I've wanted to read this for so long, but I've never come around to it. And it's also such one of those really large books, but very excited about it. Um, then I have Game Board of the Gods by Richelle Mead. This is one of the only books by Richelle Mead that I haven't read yet. Uh, I've read the majority of it, um, except the Jewel series and this. So I will want to try and 
get to Game Board of the Gods, even though I know there's only two books out and it's supposed to be a trilogy and I don't think, and it's been really long time since you posted anything for that, published anything for that, but I'm still interested in reading it. Um, the sixth book I have on my list is actually the one that I don't have access to anywhere uh, that I'll have to buy in some way or form if I pick it, And but that's because I've wanted to read this for so long. This author in general, she's very popular in the in the paranormal romance genre, and that is Angel's Blood or Guilt, the first book in the Guilt Hunter series by Nalini Singh. I think that's how you say it. Um, I really wanted to read this, and this is more urban fantasy than paranormal romance. I've said, I've heard, so that's why I wanted to start with this one. Even though I have a couple of booktubers who uh, definitely prefer uh, the Side Chain Changeling series. Um, compared to the Guild Hunters, but I'm going to start out with the Guild Hunters and then I'll move to the other one if I really like it. Then I have the seventh book, it's a middle grade book, and that is Magic by Andy Sage. I know uh, Connor from Connor Brian read it and he really enjoyed it and I have seen more people like it. Um, and it's definitely one I can get from the library, so I'll be looking forward to reading that. And the next book is a Neil Gaiman book and that is An Ocean at the End of the Lane. Uh, I have read a, big, a handful of Neil Gaiman books and they've been sort of hit and miss but I definitely enjoy some of them a, a lot and I think I want also to reread one of them to see if it was just me um, but I definitely am very intrigued about this one I've heard very excellent things uh, I might listen to the audio if I can't get a hand of it because I feel like Neil Gaiman um, narrates a lot of his books and he is definitely a really good narrator. I listened to the Norse Mythology book, even though I don't love the book, I enjoyed the narration of the audio, so. The ninth book I have on this list is Night Pleasures by Sherilyn Kenyon, the first book in the Dark Hunter universe. Um, this is a really, really long series um, that I've really wanted to read for so long, and I have it on my Kindle, so it's just about me getting to it. And I actually think I read the first 25% of it but didn't put it down for whatever reason but I can definitely re get to this one it's not very long the first one and get a taste of it but I also want to read the second one because I know that's the real start this is like more of a prequel story to it like kind of in the vein of the um, Immortals After Dark series where the first one even though it's numbered as the first it's very short and not a lot of people recommend that as a starting point but i started with it so yeah anyway the next one i have the next four books are by nora roberts because i really would like to get more nora roberts into my reading again and these are all two of them are uh, the start of new series and two of them are standalones the first one is dance upon the air by nora roberts i think this is the first in the Chesapeake Bay series? Is that another one? I'm not sure. Um, then I have Dark Witch by Nora Roberts, which I know is, is the first one in the Cosmo Dwyer series. Um, then I have the two um, standalones I put on here. Is The first one is Black Hills um, by Nora Roberts, and the second one is Chasing Fire. They are all the ones with the highest average rating. Um, but also have a lot of people read it, so I figure it might be a really good one. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading them. Then I have A Great and Terrible Beauty by Libba Bray, another Libba Bray. I sort of have a feeling I might really like her books, so I decided to put, put more than one book on this TBR. Then I have the only series by Rick Ryan that I haven't read or started is the Kane Chronicle series, which starts out with The Red Pyramid, so that is on my list as well. And then I want to reread The Raven Boys by Mega Steve Vada, so put it on here because I really would like to start over and see if it, it grabs my attention a little bit more if I read it, um, because I didn't like the audio at all. Then I have Hounded by Kevin Hearn, which fits really well because I recently actually just bought a copy of it, but I also have it on my Kindle, so <laughs> that's why I put it on here in the first place. The next book I have is Guilty Pleasures by Lauren K. Hamilton. This is the first book in the Anita Blake series. I have this on my Kindle. I've wanted to read it. I know that everyone says that at one point that it, it just falls a little bit apart in terms of how amazing it is. Like it's it it uh, on a down, downhill spiral. Um, but I still really want to read what it's about and hear 
find out why a lot of people really love the first 10. I feel like that's like the limit. They say the first 10 are pretty good, are really, really good. And then it just take it down, nosedive uh, in terms of quality. But yeah. Um, the next book is also a very is a very popular book here on booktube and that is the lives of Locker and Moore by Scott Lynch. This is the first book in the Gentleman Bastard series and I really wanted to read this because I hear a lot of great things about this um, and I hear it's like sort of fantasy of manners and then they have thieves and it's like a little bit like maybe like the three musketeers or something like that which intrigues me because I've read some other fantasy that is sort of inspired by that and I really really enjoyed it so I will definitely look forward to reading that. And the 20th book I have on this list is uh, Crystal Gardens by Amanda Quick. This is the first in a series, I think, and it Amanda Quick is writing in historical romance, paranormal romance, kind of like that in but in a historical setting. Um, like this author is has like three or four pen names, and I know she's known as Jane Ann Krantz when she writes in normal books, like more normal timeline, I think. Um, and then she writes under the name uh, Jane Castle as well, where I think it's more paranormal today. And then the Amanda Quick one is the historical one. Um, but don't quote me on it, it, I could be wrong. The 21st book I have on this list is The Warrior Heir by Cinder Williams Chima. This, oh actually I think I changed it to the other series, The Demon King. Is that the one? Uh, because that's available at the library, so, and the other one is not. Then I have Skinwalker by Faith Hunter, another urban fantasy series that I'm very, very, very interested in reading. I have this book on my Kindle and have had it for a really long time now. So I just need to get to it and find out if it's one I will enjoy. Um, the 23rd book on my list is uh, Big Little Lies by uh, Lianne Moriarty. I'm one of those very few book people here on booktube apparently that hasn't read this book. Um, it was really really hype when I just started it and it had another boost when the TV show happened a little while later. Um, but I really want to read it. I've had it on my TBR for so long now it feels like and so I really want to see what it's about and if I will get invested in this because I hear people uh, get completely obsessed with it um yeah and then another one that was also really popular when i started on booktube um but i added it before i started booktube and that is the story life of aj fickery um by gabrielle seven um she was very hype right around that time when i started booktube and i definitely am interested in reading this i think it's like won some literary awards or something I'm not really sure. Um, it's sort of set in a bookstore, I think, if I remember correctly. And obviously that's something that intrigues me. The 25th book is Masked by Moonlight. I forgot to write down the author, but I believe it's Nancy Gideon. If I remember correctly, this is another, I think, paranormal romance book. Um, I'm not sure, but I'm. it's available on Storytel in ebook form, so I'm looking forward to trying out that one. And the next book is a cozy mystery, and that is Death by a Honeybee by Abigail Keem. Um, so I am want to get more cozy mysteries in, um, so this is one I have on my Kindle, so I'll be looking forward to reading that one. And I also want to read The Restore by Amanda Stevens. This is a also a sort of mystery series, but it's set in a graveyard. Um, the 28th book is Summer at Willow Lake by Susan Wicks. I know she's a really, really popular romance author and I've never read anything by her before. Then I have the 29th book, it's a Danish author, and that is um, Skama and Stata by Lene Kopperbill. This is also called Shamer's Daughter in English. It is one that's been translated. Um, she is one of the most popular fantasy authors in Denmark, so I'm very interested in reading it. I've had it on my TBR for a long time, so I should definitely get to it. Then I have Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. I started this once, but I didn't really get into it at the time. I'm going to try it out again, but this time I think I'm going to listen to it in audio form and see if it doesn't get better. I haven't watched the movie, and I don't want to watch the movie before I've read the book. So, yeah. The 31st book I have on my list is The Stolen Songbird by Daniel L. Jensen. This I have on my Kindle, 
Uh, I think it's one of those I got from the Humble Bundle fantasy purchase thing I got at one point where I got a lot of big books. The 32nd book I have on this is The Book of Speculation by Erika Swyler. This one I don't know a lot about, but I think it's something to do with books because a media book within a book kind of thing. Um, that's why I added it. The 33rd book is uh, Death's Hand by S.M. Rain. I read two books by this author before, but it was in another series. It was called Preternatural Affairs. Um, I think this is sort of about ghosts instead, and I really look forward to trying that out. I think that the author wrote in an interesting way. It was very fast paced and sort of something that was easy to read when I felt like that sound sort of um, of genre. The next book is Cupcakes, Trinkets and Other Deadly Magic by Megan Gianna Deutsch. This is a cozy mystery, but it's also a paranormal book. So it's like a paranormal cozy mystery um, that I'm looking forward to trying out because I haven't really read any cozy mysteries that takes that um, paranormal um, or witchy type of spin to it. The 35th book is Kiss a Girl in the Rain by Nancy Warren. This is a book I have on my Kindle that I got for free. Um, but the author, I read a book called Frosted Shadows, which is a cozy mystery book. And I really, 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 really enjoyed it. I think it's one of the best cozy mysteries I've read. Um, or it was the first one that was like a favorite of mine. Um, so I wanted to read something else by her, and this is more like a contemporary romance, and I hope I will enjoy it as much as I enjoyed Frosted Shadows, so. The next one I have is Sea of Shadows by Kelly Armstrong. Kelly Armstrong has, is the author of um, the Summoner trilogy, um, which, and as a, a spin-off to that, I love those two trilogies a lot. I think I gave them like four and a half both or something like that, four and a half stars in total. And so I, and then I start, tried out her, her series that is about set in like a not more of an adult type of series um, that is set in contemporary setting with some sort of magical spin to it. But I didn't really like that one. I really didn't like it very much but I still want to try something else by her so I decided to put this on and see if it's more my style and I hope I will like, like it as much as the Summoner trilogies and stuff like that. The next book I have on this list is The Grey Friar by Clay Griffiths and one of the biggest reasons for me adding this to my list is because the narrator of the audio is uh, James Masters and if you know, if you've been on my channel for a while, you know James Masters is one of my absolute favorite narrators of books. So I really, really want to read this one um, also because of that, but it's also paranormal vampire-like romance thing, I think. <laughs> then I have Geek Girl by Honey Smale. This is definitely one I added I, and I wasn't really sure if I actually wanted it on here, but I'm sort of interested because I've seen some people really love this series. So. Now we're definitely getting into the part where I started adding books because of booktube. So the next many books are um, inspired by booktubers. So yeah, but I'm still in intrigued um, about reading them. The first one is The Girl of Fire and Thorns by Ray Carson. Ray Carson was very, very popular when I started and this specific trilogy was definitely as well. And I am interested in reading it still because I think it sounds like something I would really enjoy. Then I have The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer by Michelle Hutkin. This is a paranormal book as well. Um, like, I mean, a lot of people have high, high praises about this one, but also some people say it's like trash, but I'm still interested. I want to find out what it's about. It seems like it might be one I will really enjoy. I have the 41st book I have is A World Without Heroes by um, Brandon Moll, which is a middle grade author that I haven't checked out yet, but I hear excellent things about his, him as an author. Um, I remember the first one I heard about this, like these books comes probably recommended by Lindsay Ray when she was a booktuber. I, she was like my favorite booktuber and I'm still sad about the fact that she's not making videos any longer. Um, but she was so amazing. She read so many things and like it was sort of a mixture 
of fantasy, um, urban fantasy par uh, thrillers and and lo uh, normal contemporaries, but she read so much, so she was always having a lot of good recommendations for us. <laughs> and I know this is she's the first one I heard about this author, and she also convinced me to get started on Brandon Sanderson. But also, um, Connor from Connor Ryan really talks highly about this author, and he is. Uh, he reads a lot of middle grade and stuff. The next one I have on my list is I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. I don't know if this is something for me, but I'm intrigued. I still want to read it and see what the fuss is about. Then I have The Star Touch Queen by Roshani Chokshi. Um, I read the middle grade one she had, what's it called? Arusha and Yet of Time. Really enjoyed it. Um, I know this is different, but I really enjoyed the mythology aspects of it. And I know this is also uh, heavily inspired on Indian folklore so I'm very excited to try this out and see what it's about. Then I have When We Collided by Emery Lord which I don't know if I like but I heard a lot about the author and it's available at my library so I'll check it out. And I have Glory O'Brien's History of the Future by A.S. King because I really would like to try out A.S. King. I actually have her book Dick but I haven't gotten around to read it yet so we'll see if I pick up that one as well. And then I have Never Night by Jay Kristoff because he's such a popular author and the specific trilogy has gotten so much buzz especially this year because the last and final book in that trilogy came out this year and yeah I'm I got sort of sort of intrigued to try it out and see if it's something like that I would enjoy um, then I have The Hating Game by Sally Thorne which is a very popular contemporary romance uh, book that a lot of people have read on booktube as well then I have We Are the Ants by Sean David Hutchinson. This is definitely also one of those book to recommends thing. Um, but I'm looking forward to trying it out. I have a feeling that Sean David Hutchinson's writing is something that I'll get on with, but we'll see when I get around to it. The next one is one I added, it's one I got for free on on my Kindle, and it's The Queen's Poisoner by Jeff Wheeler. I just love this cover. I know Sam from Sam's Nonsense really, really enjoys. Um, Jeff Wheeler's books. Sam is not doing booktube any longer, but I know she has the videos so you can watch them if you want to. Um, but she definitely has um, read a lot of these books and really enjoyed them. I think she also read this series and definitely talked really highly about them, so I'm even more interested in reading them now. Then I have Major's Blood by David Hare. This I added because Caitlin from Kitty G uh, read this quartet and talk really highly of it and I got it on my Audible so I hope I'll really like it. It's one of those really really long fantasy books but it's sort of apparently um, going to be reminding people a little bit of Game of Thrones and so that is what intrigued me because I really like the political intrigue uh, that is a big presence in the Game of Thrones books or Song of Ice and Fire books. Then I have another uh, Casey West book and that is uh, On the Fence by Casey West, just to add one more if I like it. Then I have Between Two Thorns by Emma Newman, which is a, an urban fantasy book with Faye uh, that I'm very intrigued about. I have uh, the first book in her science fiction series and this one I will be, re if I read it, I'll be reading it from the library. Then I have The Paper Menagerie and Other Stories by Ken Liu. This is um, a science fiction, fantasy, speculative fiction type of short story collection um, edited or written by Ken Liu and I haven't read this one but I hear so many great things especially about from people who've also read um, Stories of Elias and Others by Ted Chiang and who really loves this one and even makes maybe likes this more so I'm definitely very intrigued um, about reading this one. Then I have The Gollum and the Ginny by, I didn't write down the author's name and I don't remember what you called, it's something with an H, looking forward to it. Then I have The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Islington, this is a self-published book that I'm really really looking forward to reading because I actually started this one and I really enjoyed the writing style so I think it's something I'll end up really really enjoying. Um, but it was such a long book and I had so many things at the same time so I put it down and I sort of forgot about it but I have it on my Kindle and I'll definitely try and get to it again um, soon and hopefully I'll pick it over the year and read it but 
we'll see. Then I have another audiobook that I'm planning on trying out this year, if it, I, if, I mean, if I pick it, and that is The Grace of King by Ken Liu. This is definitely very praised by um, Rhea from The Book Finch, as well as Caitlin from Kitty D, and James from James Chatham. Um, they all read it and really, really enjoyed them. So I am very excited to try out this author and see what it's like. It's East Asian inspired fantasy. Um, and I would really like to read this one and hopefully it will be amazing. The th 57th book I have on my list is uh, The Thief by Megan Whalen Turner. I hear a lot of great things about this series and I've wanted to read it for a really long time. And uh, I think the recommendation came from Rachel from Kalanadi. I think that's where I heard about this one the first time and I was really intrigued about this series. Then I have Dusk or Dark or Dawn or Day by Jonah Maguire. This is a short story that she's written. It's a standalone and I have it on my Kindle so I thought it was a good add to the mixture um, since I've had it on my TBR for a while now and I've had it on my Goodread on, on my Kindle for a while as well. Then I have the 59th book, it's a long title. It's called The Singular and Extraordinary Tale of Mirror and Goliath by Ishbel B, which is a sort of magical realism type of book, I think. I think it's definitely sort of set in a historical setting. Maybe it's a sort of carnival thing, I'm not sure. Um, I heard about this from Samantha from Sam's Nonsense. Um, she definitely talked about it at one point and thought it sounded intriguing and then I got it from the Humble Bundle and I could just as well try it out and see what it's like. And the final thing I have on this list is because I needed one more book just to add a nice round number and the 60th, 60th book is The Almost Sisters by Jocelyn Jackson which is a contemporary romance book. I think it's something to do with twins, if I remember correctly. A lost twins, like twins that haven't grown up together. I think that's what it's about and I'm intrigued. I really would like to read a book about twins that seems real. <laughs> um, all the twin type books that I've read before um, haven't really felt very authentic. We'll see. I'm interested in reading this and I hope it will be great. So yeah, those are the books that I put on this list for um, the oldies, but hopefully goodies um, TBR. Um, so that is all of the orange um, labels in here and all of the green ones are the serious ones that I will talk about in my next video. But definitely let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of the books and what you thought of them, if you're excited about me reading them. What do you think of this kind of idea? Do I have something similar going on for you to make it a little bit more random what you pick every month? Also, let me know about that. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video very soon. Goodbye!